God, will you do a work with us this morning? A supernatural work, Lord God. Open our spiritual eyes that we might see. Enlighten our hearts this morning, God, that we might know that in you we are above and not beneath. We are the head and not the tail. We are victors and not victims. We are seated in heavenly places, though we live our lives out on land. We are miracles, though mere mortals. Open our eyes to see that this morning, God. And we will brag about you in this place. For your glory, we ask it. Amen. Amen. All through this month, you and I will be inundated with reports of those in politics who, concerning their various races, they lost. And for the next couple of days, Georgia fans and <laughs> Notre Dame fans and LSU fans will, and Duke fans will be reminding many, hey, y'all lost. And soon, millions who have spent a fortune on tickets in the nearly $2 billion Powerball lottery will discover that they lost. <laughs> Sadly, there is a subtle message tucked into all of these accounts of defeat, namely, that was what you needed. That would have changed your life. That would have meant everything. But on this morning, I have an announcement to make. An announcement of a lifetime, a message that is going to trump all messages. The message for every saint who is persevering. The message to all saints who will one day firmly affix their hands to the plow and never look back. A message from all saints who have overcome and are now in paradise with their Savior. The message... Rejoice, we win. Saints of all ages, praise the Lord with singing and dancing. Praise him when you rise in the morning. Praise him on your beds at night. Rejoice, all saints of all ages, we win. Paul wanted the believers in Ephesus to know this truth. And he chose a very interesting way to share this good news with his hearers. Paul told the Gentile believers in Ephesus that their faith in Jesus brought them into kinship with God's chosen people, the Jews. And now they were joint heirs with the Son of God, giving them access to a glorious inheritance that's been set aside for them. Paul says to them then, and he says to us now, this inheritance is guaranteed you have a promised reward, an unbelievable gift. And then he does something, something that I don't know I would have appreciated had I been there a part of his audience. You see, if you come to me and tell me that I am the beneficiary of an amazing inheritance, a great gift that's been laid up for me. I can imagine, because of hard times, because of mountain bills, because of stressors in this life, because grown children are always in need of a helping hand, I can imagine that I would want to know how much money do I get? How much is my portion worth? Did I inherit cars? Houses, land. Tell me, Paul, 
How does my inheritance help me in this world? Because to get this inheritance might mean that many of my troubles would cease. But Paul does not spell out the details of the inheritance. Paul doesn't attempt to lay out any specifics. Instead, Paul takes us from earth to heaven, points us away from time, and sets our affections on eternity. The apostle says this, yes, you have a promised inheritance that you will acquire possession of. And concerning this inheritance, I am constantly praying for you that God will give you heavenly wisdom and reveal things to you about Jesus that will open your heart to know exactly what it is you've hoped for, what you've suffered for, what you've persevered for. Then Paul goes on to describe things that are ethereal and intangible, things like glory and greatness and riches and power and might. And I can't help but think that if I were there along with many of you, if we were there, the looks on our faces might lead the apostle to say, I know I know, I know that you want to know the earthly value of your inheritance. You want to know the worldly worth of what God has promised you. But your reward is so otherworldly that I cannot begin to describe it to you. 1 Corinthians 2, now I know I has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Wow, what a wonder. A reward so extraordinary that I need new wisdom to comprehend it. What a wonder, a salvation so spectacular that my entire possession of it in the present reveals that there's more to come. I need you to sit with that, sit with that, because God laid that on my heart this morning, and I, I, I'm still wrestling with it, that our salvation is so spectacular that right now I embrace it, I have it in all of its richness and all of its fullness, but yet in my finitude, though I have it, I possess it as I look around, as I embrace it, and as I know it, the very possession of it tells me there's so much more. This is not it, CJ. The greatest thing to ever happen to me, namely salvation, I have it, I thank God for it, and yet having it means there's more. I don't have a clue as to what ultimately awaits us, we who trust in the finished work of Christ Jesus. But I pray that we will work hard not to think so little of our Heavenly Father so as to reduce his promised inheritance for us to mere stuff, stuff of this world, stuff that we need to feel, we need to touch, we need to see, we need to have. Yes, yes, we have an inheritance. But take note of something Paul said in verse 18. He suggests that we who are his children, God's children, we who are saints, we are his inheritance. Imagine that. God loves you and me so much. He loves our children so much. Those who have committed their lives to him, he loves them so much. He loves our parents and our loved ones and our friends so much that he views us and all of our failings and all of our flaws and all of our faults. He views us. He considers us his inheritance. So if in this world you find yourself destitute and dissatisfied, hungry and hated, isolated and ill-treated, called to endure 
tremendous tribulations. And the thought of getting an inheritance, the thought of getting some stuff, leads you to believe that it will rescue you from life's momentary afflictions. Remember the message for all saints. Remember the message to all saints. Remember the message from all saints. Rejoice. We win. Let us pray. God, you are so good. Will you open our eyes? Enlighten our hearts to know the beautiful, awesome things that you have prepared for us. And even as you do that on this day, to cause us to know a little more, a little more about our inheritance, our reward, might we be shaken to our core to know that there is so, so much more to it. For your glory, we ask this for Christ's sake. Amen.